Thank you very much, Martin. Um, it's great to have you all here today. Um, so yeah, obviously, I'm going to be running through 10 things I've learned about Postgres um, relatively quickly. And there's, there is quite a bit of um, SQL in some of these slides. So um, we'll definitely try and make the um, slides available later so that you can have a look back at them. Um, is my clicker working? Yes. Cool. So um, just brief introduction. Uh, Postgres at Land Information New Zealand um, has been in use for quite a long time. Um, in 2004, the geodetic team started using Postgres. Um, from about 2014, we've had a number of uh, systems which have been developed with QGIS as a front end um, and for uh, data manipulation. And uh, Postgres, Postgres is the back end. So it started with the Gazetteer, which is our place name starter set, um, and has continued through addressing and road data management and more recently building outlines and aerial imagery surveys. Um, so, the first thing that I've learned about Postgres is that spatial indices are your greatest asset. Um, so adding a spatial index is relatively straightforward. Um, and then updating the query planner so that it makes um, best use of that spatial index. Um, a spatial index is effectively a, a very simple representation um, of your geometry being stored in your database um, in order to do rapid analysis. So um, this is Te Papa Tongawira in Wellington, New Zealand. It's quite a complex shaped building um, with another little bit of <laughs> building next to it. Um, but its representation is a bounding box is uh, just a square. And so the entire water, Wellington waterfront looks something like this. Um, those bounding boxes are then grouped into progressively larger rectangles and so when, when doing uh, you know, an intersect or something like that, the database can very efficiently compare these very simple geometries um, before it needs to get to a point to actually extract that complex geometry and do the final comparison. Um, so uh, the next thing I've learned is that it's fast, and it's mostly because of the previous point. These, um, uh, this is a representation, this is uh, 300,000 building outlines that cover the Wellington region. Um, if we do something like find the centroid of those building outlines in QGIS 3, it takes about 23 seconds. And if we do it in PostGIS, it takes about three seconds. Um, however, now that I've put this slide together, Niall will probably rewrite the centroid implementation in QGIS <laughs> and make it 10 times faster than what it is at the moment. But that's competition that I'm quite happy to see continue. <laughs> Um, so there's just a bunch of centroids on our um, building outlines in the um, Wellington CBD. What I've also learned, though, is that if it's slow, there's probably a better way. Um, if a post just query one, runs for like two minutes, then I just bin it and start again because I probably did something wrong or forgot to add a spatial index or something. But this particular case, um, part of our LiDAR process is uh, uh, part of the... Um, uh, QA process for our LiDAR surveys um, is analyzing the uh, grids of LiDAR data that have been supplied to us. So um, something really simple that our LiDAR analyst wants to do is find out which uh, of these 1.1 million grid squares that make up the whole of New Zealand are part of um, the latest LiDAR survey. Uh, so just a simple ST intersex should get the right result. Um, but in this particular case, it was taking a couple of minutes just to do that one large polygon gone against a whole bunch of small polygons. Um, so uh, using ST subdivide, we can make that one large polygon a whole bunch of small polygons that have a more um, equal distribution, like number of vertices. Um, and so if we zoom in a little closer at the edge of this LiDAR survey where there's more dense points, there's smaller squares. And if we then find the intersecting polygons from the previous, um, the previous grids uh, do the exact same intersects but on the subdivided instead of the larger polygon, um, it takes a third of a second instead of two minutes. Um, so that's just making really good use of the spatial indexes on both of those layers. The fourth thing I've learned is that consistency is key. Um, 
if I'm doing a bunch of analysis of different, uh, trying to figure out some spatial relationships and stuff, um, as I go through the process, I really want to make sure that I've got a primary key and I've got a spatial index the whole way through. Um, otherwise, I might find some uh, inefficient processes in amongst that. So in um, PostGIS, when doing uh, different spatial analysis, I often end up in a situation where, you know, in this case, if I take a polygon and I want its vertices, um, then I'll end up with five rows. And if I run the query that's shown, I get the same ID, the original ID for that polygon five times. So I can't use that as a primary key. Um, so you can make use of the row numbers that Postgres stores. So on the previous um, slide, we've got one, two, three, four, five on the side, um, which is a representation of that. So if we um, wrap our original select statement um, with a window function and select the row number over as ID, um, then we get one, two, three, four, five, and can immediately um, use that as our primary key. So um, we also obviously make our own functions um, that have our business logic and store those in the database. Um, so combining the spatial operations from, from PostGIS um, to get the result that we want to get for the task at hand. And in many cases, we can find um, similar tasks that we can reuse uh, one function over and over again for different purposes. Um, this is pretty heavy in terms of code, but basically, <coughs> If we want to find out what suburb intersects a polygon, then we've got some sort of business rules around how that works. I'll just run through it step by step. Um, these are building outlines again in Auckland Harbour. So this area down the bottom here is the end of a wharf. Um, and there's actually, the wharf actually continues a little bit further because it's changed recently. And we've got a few building outlines on the end there. Um, so as they stand, they don't exist within any of our suburbs, but what our function does is it first searches for all suburbs within a kilometre of that building outline um, using STD within, which makes really good use of our spatial indexes again, um, to drill down to just the five suburbs that, that intersect that area, and then we can get the distance um, in ascending order so we can find the suburb that is closest. This function also handles the case where a building uh, crosses over the boundary of two different suburbs and um, we use the area of the intersection if, we, if it's a case where we just want to assign one suburb and forget about the other. Um, so the final part of that whole process is limiting it to just the one situation. These stored functions can then be used uh, just as part of other tasks that we need to do. For example, inserting a bunch of building outlines in a bulk import. Um, the more complex code that was on the previous slide is just part of the suburb underscore intersect underscore polygon function. Um, but each part's broken down and it's not you know, one large piece of code stored in one place. The sixth thing I've learned is that um, geometry types, posters can be very freeing about what you can store in a geometry column. So if you um, just uh, say, I've got a geometry column and, and that's it, then you can do something like insert a point, a line string, and a polygon, um, which is cool, but not particularly practical if you can't display it in anything. Um, QGIS obviously needs uh, those three things to be separated or you need to load it in three times and assign which geometry type you're, you want to display. Um, but adding a geometry type with the syntax as point um, means that if we repeat the same insert as before, the first time it hits something that's not a point, it's going to error out. So um, understanding what you can and can't do and where it's appropriate to add that kind of type constraint um, is obviously really important to maintaining the integrity of your data. Geometry constraints can get a lot more um, complicated than that or richer than that. Uh, if you don't want to allow overlaps between polygons in your database, then you can create a function um, which 
uh, uses ST intersects and not touches, which is a close approximation of ST of, of um, I don't want this thing to overlap. Um, and then you can add that constraint as a check constraint to your um, database. And then every single time you add a new polygon, um, you'll have a check to make sure that this is not overlapping any of the polygons that I already have in my database. Um, so again, if, if your business rules determine um, that X, Y, Z shouldn't happen, you can probably build something in at the database level to really make sure that it doesn't happen. Because the PostGIS community is an open source um, community, there's also a whole bunch of uh, functions that are already out there that you can go and have a look at um, that might not be part of the core code at the moment. Um, so there's a cool one called um, Normalized Geometry, which pretty much has its own website. Um, Gaspari's created uh, a whole bunch of different parameters that you can feed in for how you want it to behave. But some of the things that it can do is remove spikes from existing geometries. So the top line is just showing geometries that have like an out and back um, and then cleaned up. And it can also um, simplify the number of vertices. So this is a circle that slowly becomes um, you know, coarser and coarser depending on the parameters that you use with this function. So if you've got overly detailed information, um, then that's one way that you can simplify. Linz also has um, a whole bunch of uh, open source Postgres extensions and um, uh, uh, NZ building outlines. So some of our systems that we use to store PostGIS data in um, are on GitHub and you can have a look at um, how we're using it there. The ninth thing I've learned is that recently PG Admin 4 got a geometry viewer. Um, so in PG Admin 4, you can now select ID and Geom, and if you have a geometry column, you'll get this little blue eye icon. Um, and if you click on that, you can actually see your geometries within PG Admin. Um, if they are in a coordinate system that's not uh, 4326, then you just get a blank background. But if you transform, um, the selection to 4326 WGS84, then you get some OpenStreetMap um, contextual information in the background. And you can actually choose between um, this, uh, five different maps to show in the background. The PG Admin for Geometry Viewer also has um, the unique distinction of being <coughs> able to show you uh, that mixture of polygons, line strings, and points. So if you are debugging some intersection where you've returned polygons and line strings and you only wanted polygons, um, you can actually view it in there and see what's going on. The tenth thing is that I've learned that I really enjoy solving spatial problems with PostGIS. Um, I think it's really satisfying when you find the way to do something that works really efficiently and um, we've obviously at Linz continued to expand our use of PostGIS for that reason. Um, and yeah, I, I think um, the, the list of projects will just continue to grow that are, that are being stored in a PostGIS PostGIS database. So yeah, thank you for that.